kind of been in a little bit of a funk lately. Uh, even though this is an awesome individual performance on your part, what does it mean for the team? Uh, I think it's, you know, I think um, well, the scuffles that we've been going through, the scuffles that we've been kind of going through lately, I think we've been looking for any kind of positive, whether that's on the offensive side or defensive side. You know, today, just like I said, to be a part of whatever we needed to kickstart this and put it in the right direction, you know, I'm glad to be that. I could be wrong. I thought I saw you double take at the scoreboard after the second inning. Were you looking at your pitch count and were you surprised that you could only just eight uh, pitches? More, more often than not, I'm usually kind of looking at who's up to bat, who's up, who's up to come up next, and you know, what the count is. So that's just about it. Thank you. Sam, earlier in the uh, clubhouse, you had told Hector and Agnes had a meeting. Um, what did you discuss, and did that help the way you guys? Before the game? Before the oh, game? yeah. And did uh, that help? Well, we always, uh, I'll do my studying before the game and a couple days before just to get an idea of what I want to do to these guys or whoever I'm coming up against. And on the day that I pitch, I used to just go over with him and make sure we're on the same page and whatever the whole thing we want to do. And Hector, at what point did you know that he was dialed in and on his way to pitching earlier? You know, we never, we never released that because we never think it at the moment. In, in this distance, you know, in this baseball, anything can happen in the game. So I was, well, I just tried to, they called the right pitch, you know, and he's doing an amazing job. He was, Coming his pitches down the song, and this what happened, you know. This what is that kind of stuff happened. Uh, Hector Bruce said after the game that he talked to you and told you about how special this is, you know, for you. Have you ever caught a no hitter before at any level? And you know, what did it feel like, you know, being here end of it? I guess it's amazing, you know. Anybody want to be a part of, of something special like this, you know, and that's a great feeling, you know. In the moment, you don't want to think of during the game, you don't want to think about it, but after that, Probably it's the, it's the best feeling in the world after they won the World Series. That was the second one. The best <laughs> feeling in the world. Tim, in the dugout, did you have to, to kind of break the ice with your teammates and chat it up, or did they know you well enough to know that you yeah, just they, like to talk? You no, know, it's just the kind of guy I am. So guys are going to chit chat with me throughout the game and put in the BS a little bit here and there and just make light of any kind of given situation. I think that's just kind of who I am and how I'll come into the Tim, just comparing this one. Last one, 140 pitches last time. You were a little bit effectively wild in that one. This one, you really seem like you're under control. Could you just sort of tell, talk to us about your stuff and, and the evolution of your stuff and what you've been able to do from that point to this point? Yeah, um, you know, I mean, I've always been that guy that's just kind of going to go for the strikeout. And, you know, I think my first one there, I had 13, so I, was, I think I was going for those a little bit more often. And, you know, today I just tried to be a little bit more efficient and take what they were going to give me. And they were giving me a lot of ground balls and a lot of pop flies, so I'm just going to try to keep attacking in the way that I was, and uh, you know, that's not uh, fall from that, you know, mentally, and just try to stay focused. I think that's always the hardest part is in the inning focus, but uh, you know, to get that first guy out and uh, working from there. But today, you know, kind of all came together, and the result was there. Tim, as sharp as you were, can you remember throwing any pitch that made you, once you released it, you said, uh oh, you know, it was like that a hanger or something like that. I can't think of really one that I threw that I felt like that. You know, and that's, that's a rarity for me. So you know, I felt pretty good with the, the overall command of my stuff. And like I said, it wasn't a stuff day, it was just where I was able to put it. Tim, you told us at the start of the season you wanted to get back to being the pitcher you once were. Is this a major step in getting there? Is this proof to yourself that you can still be that guy? Um, I don't think we just look at one outing. You know, I think we look at a run of outings and consistency, consistency in that. And I think that'll be something that I look for after a couple more outings. You know, uh, I'll just take this as for what it's worth. And you know, over the next couple of outings, uh, you know, it's not going to say the same, but hopefully good. Tim was asking Bruce Bochy about this. It seems like you're becoming, you're making that transition from becoming the guy who overpowered people to knowing how to, to finesse and get by. The hitter is that like, how tough a transition is that? Because I know today it didn't look tough. Your breaking ball was really you know dropping off the table. Uh, you know, like I said, like I said earlier that uh, I'm just going to go with what they were giving me. You know, and they were taking certain swings on pitches, and most of the sliders and curveballs that I kept down in the zone, they were you know, hitting ground balls to you know, first off and second baseman. So I was going to try to attack that part of the zone, and I didn't throw too, all that many fastballs. So I kind of put on my second. 
Hector Tim's been there before, but what were your emotions going into the ninth inning and also how many times did he shake you off in, in the late innings? Uh, what I can say, you know, like I said before, during the, the game, you know, just try to be focused 100%. After, after the last sound, you can enjoy that moment and see what's the feeling. Uh, but before, you have to be focused, uh, keep calling pitches, and probably after the last sound, that was the best moment, you know. But after, before that, you have to be focused 100%. Tim, I think you had Headley one, two, before you walked him. Did you think any of those uh, three balls were close enough? I mean, that's all the uh, separate. Uh, maybe, maybe the first pitch, but you know, it was it, you know, I think he down. That's not up to me. And uh, the exception to a couple of those pitches, I don't think I was around the plate as much as I needed to be. Tim, you didn't need any super defensive heroics behind you, but did you kind of uh, blink when Morris cut off Blanco and that, that one in the gap? No, I, I have confidence in the fact that you guys are going to catch the balls when they're out there, and they're going to communicate well. And you know, if it did happen, then so be it. But it's not something I'm worried about. Uh, Tim, uh, I, I don't know if anybody told you this, but there's only the only other Giant who threw two no hitters was Christy Mathewson, who was uh, who was a pretty nice pitcher in his time. Um, what do you think about hearing your name alongside his? Uh, you know, anytime your name is alongside of any of the Giants greats that have come through. Follow-up question. Um, you want to tell us what you told Fleming about how you're going to celebrate tonight? Pretty piss poor uh, batting average, so I got that thing above 100, and I'm feeling a lot better about it. <laughs> 